Okay, good morning, everybody. Thank you all for being here. So we'll start this event uh, that is dedicated to the presentation of our master's degree in uh, cybersecurity at the University of Padova. It is uh, a joint degree between the Department of Mathematics and the Department of uh, Information Engineering. We are here, also the director will give their welcome speech in a while. Uh, and also we have uh, several uh, uh, guests from uh, institutions, uh, particularly we have the National Cybersecurity Agency. We have uh, a colleague which is now uh, on leave for uh, uh, this uh, role at the National Agency in Cybersecurity. Uh, Professor Paola Zeni will also be part of a panel discussion today. Uh, we also have uh, Massimo Tedeschi from uh, Leonardo, another uh, important company uh, in, in Italy for the cybersecurity, I mean, defense, and other activities as well. And Enrico Fazio from uh, Cyphergate, which is another company. And they will give uh, I mean, institutional and industry view uh, on, on the need uh, of education for cybersecurity, which we will try to contribute. Without further delay, I want to uh, give now the floor uh, for a welcome uh, speech uh, of our vice rector of uh, third mission, uh, Professoressa Monica Fedeli. Thanks. So, welcome everybody. It's really a great pleasure and an honor to see you all here and uh, to, I will say hi to the people that are connected. Uh, this is really a very important occasion uh, uh, to share the importance uh, of, our master, of our master degree. Uh, the, the focus of the master degree is cybersecurity. And we all know that the goal and the aim of program like this is really to create well-being, to make a better world for people that are living connected. So this is really an ethical task that university and institutions and guest partner businesses have. So we have really to guarantee this for, for, for people and for in a, in a, in a global uh, um, <clears throat> perspective. Uh, the other very important thing is that this program put together Italian and international students and this kind of exchange, this kind of seeing the problem from different perspectives, also different cultural perspectives is really very important. And we really like to promote program like this and I have to thank you the two departments and the deans of the department that today are here for, for supporting this kind of program. And uh, uh, so my thank you is to you, to the students, to the institutions involved, to the businesses and to all the colleagues, the academic colleagues that are involved in this kind of program. I really know that it will be some very interesting speeches today. So I wish you all the best and a very good rest of the morning. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Fedeli. Uh, now we'll give the floor to Professor Menegesso, the head of the engineering, uh, uh, information engineering department. Thank you. Thank you, Mauro. It's a very big pleasure for me also to give this uh, welcome and uh, to, to say a few words uh, to this, uh, to, my, to my opinion, a very important project that we shared together with uh, the Department of Mathematics. When we started to do this project, uh, we really were aware of the importance of this uh, aspect, the cybersecurity. You may see that uh, in these days, I have a lot of contact with um, the medical department for making the big data elaboration, for having a collection of data. So there are sensitive data. So the, the security of those data is very important. But then this is just a small aspect. Consider all the other aspects in general for the security of the data. And in the, in the society we are going where uh, we are having uh, tons of data that will be available everywhere, the security and how we keep secret data in importance is, is extremely uh, fundamental fact. So you will be the guys that uh, will uh, help us uh, to navigate towards this future, which has a lot of tricky situations that need to be solved. 
So I think today you will get a very good uh, overview of this uh, new laurea. We are the fourth year. So this is the fourth uh, time we start. We have the first uh, laureate degree in, in, in cybersecurity. And this is getting a very good uh, new, uh, let's say, lymph, let's say, to the society for, uh, for this aspect. So thank you very much for being here. Thank you very much to, to apply to our laurea courses. And I wish you a very nice day. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Menigesso. Now, Professor Chiarellotto, the head of the mathematics uh, department. Thank you. Thank you very much. My name is Bruno Chiarellotto. In this world where everything looks like and uh, we are not sure that what we see is uh, the real, I have to make a double check on even with myself. So I am Bruno, the director of the math department. It's a pleasure for me to be here. And uh, I really would like to say that from the beginning, we saw as uh, the two departments, the departments of uh, Professor Menegesso and my department, that uh, this was a wonderful idea. An idea in, which is really the central for the university. University has uh, some duties to do research, and we do research in cybersecurity, cryptography. We apply our research. So, and here we have industries and, uh, and uh, companies. And uh, moreover, we have a duty in regard to the society. Uh, in the world, which is uh, overconnected using uh, the web and so on, it's really important to be able to help all the society in what to maintain the secret that they want, to maintain this, the privacy. And this is our duty. So I think that is really important to have this, uh, this uh, master degree in cybersecurity. Thank you very much for everybody. And really, I would like that all and all the students online, I think that is a, a wonderful place to study cybersecurity Padova. And we have wonderful professors here. Thank you very much. Indeed, we have wonderful professors, wonderful directors, and wonderful students, and a wonderful institution, I would say. We are also very proud to have, I mean, as uh, I mean, our colleague before uh, mentioned, I mean, we have several institutional agreements also with organizations in the government in Italy, collaborations with companies. So it's very important for us to make an impact, uh, helping I mean, the education of people, but also through this helping I mean, the growth of a better society and a more secure society. So for this, I would like uh, to call uh, our panelists uh, on the table. Uh, so uh, the first will be uh, online, uh, unfortunately only online, but we are very happy to have uh, um, uh, Paola Zeni, professor and uh, now responsible for the education uh, uh, and the growth of skill in the National Agency for Cybersecurity. Paolo, can you hear us? Yes, I do hear you. Do you hear me? Yes, we can hear. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, Paolo. So let me, uh, before I give you the, the floor or the virtual floor, let me also call here in the table Massimo Tedeschi. Uh, he's a Chief Technology Officer, uh, Cybersecurity Division of Leonardo SPA. Please uh, come to the table. And the next uh, also panelist will be uh, Enrico Fazio, uh, Chief Customer Manager and uh, Marketing Officer of uh, Cyphergate. Thanks. Thank you all for being here. I will start by uh, giving the floor to uh, uh, Professor Paola Zeni that uh, is going to give us a view on the importance of the education, I guess, of cybersecurity for uh, the uh, National Cybersecurity Agency and through that uh, for our uh, country. Uh, Paolo, the floor is yours. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Are you able to share the it, slides? Well, it seems that uh, even my video is not allowed, so okay. I would like to ask your technicians to allow my my video. Technicians is here. Yes, as usual. One second.
Does it work right now? Let me try. No, it says impossible to start the video. And the slides? Let me try with the slides. The same, impossible to be uh, screen sharing. Ah, okay. No, no, second. Okay. Try now. Can you try now? Uh, it says impossible. Impossible to the video. Try now. Okay. Now it probably allows me to share the screen. But not the camera yet. Not okay, the we can camera. See slide. Okay. Okay. And probably okay. the camera as well. Okay. Now we, we see you and uh, we have your slides. You are unshared okay. the slides. Okay. Yes, I did. Just to just to say hello, and then okay. uh, I can go back to the slides. Okay. <laughs> nice seeing you. Thanks. Thank you very much. Okay. So uh, it is really a partial pleasure to be here. So the big pleasure would have been to be together with you in Padua, but unfortunately I had another talk yesterday evening and I will have a meeting just after lunch. So uh, despite the speed of trains, uh, it would have been impossible to, to reach you. Probably ah. St. Anthony would have allowed me to be in two places uh, with the ubiquitous uh, uh, feature, but uh, that's not uh, a thing I'm able to do as of now. No, now um, I will just try to to say a few things about uh, the the need for uh, for education and training in uh, in cybersecurity. And uh, before that, I will say a little bit about uh, uh, our agency. Uh, as uh, some of you probably know, ACN, Agenzia for per la Cybersicurezza Nazionale. So the, the National Cybersecurity Agency of Italy was created about two years ago by a law uh, passed uh, in the summer of 2021 and uh, became operational in September 21 with the goal of uh, being a National Cybersecurity Authority. Uh, its main role is essentially coordination between the various public bodies uh, involved in the field of cybersecurity and uh, uh, also uh, coordinating the interaction uh, with, uh, with other countries. This is by no means trivial. Um, it, it is important to know, and I was told when I joined the agency about a year ago, that before the creation of these agencies, there were probably 30 or 40 different bodies uh, in this country with some responsibilities in cybersecurity. Now, uh, specific responsibilities have remained with individual entities, but the, the, the main role of the agency is to coordinate all these uh, activities. And so it prepares a national cybersecurity strategy. And, and this is the, the task uh, which uh, was given to me. Uh, it has the goal of promoting education and training specifically collaborating with universities. And this is the reason for which uh, uh, I'm really pleased to, to be there, uh, at least virtually with you. Uh, as I said, uh, there are many entities in this country in the same way as in many other countries that uh, deal with cybersecurity. As we usually say in, uh, uh, in our agency, there are four pillars, pillars in the Italian uh, uh, cybersecurity system, uh, one of which is ACN, and I will come back to ACN, but the other three are essentially, uh, I mean, law enforcement. So here you have police, carabinieri, guardia di finanza, whose goal is uh, mainly to combat cybercrime. Then you, you have the armed forces, uh, which are responsible for military defense and so the security 
of the state, and then you have the intelligence uh, whose role is probably uh, difficult to describe, but uh, easily understood by all of you. Then what is the role of ACN in this picture? ACN collaborates with uh, the other three pillars, uh, each of which has uh, its own independence and responsibility, and we are not invading their responsibilities, but we do try to provide uh, support to all of them, coordination between all of them, and uh, uh, as we say, uh, we are a sort of catalyst uh, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in the country. And uh, this is done by means of various different activities. Uh, I apologize because uh, uh, some of these slides are in Italian, but uh, this is, uh, I'm not going into the details. I just want to mention that given the uh, pervasivity of uh, cybersecurity, uh, there is a lot of uh, uh, coordination needed. So for example, um, the agency supports the prime minister in coordinating the activities of various departments in the country. Here, I mentioned a few, probably there are even more, but uh, this is just to mention that uh, cybersecurity is a, is a complex program, problem. And then, uh, these activities are related to a number of uh, different specific issues, which are also listed here again in Italian. I don't want to enter into the details, but just to stress the fact that uh, there, is a there is a need for a lot of coordination. To pursue all these activities, the, the, the agency uh, one year ago, uh, even before I joined the agency itself, has developed what is called the National uh, Cybersecurity Strat Strategy, uh, which uh, tries to describe all the activities uh, that are needed in this country to pursue uh, a, a better status in, in, in cybersecurity. And uh, the strategy is, uh, uh, covers uh, goals uh, in three major directions uh, plus some orthogonal ones. And uh, uh, these, uh, it's, let me say, uh, in terms of goals, all done in cooperation with the other bodies. And I would say not only institutions, but also private operators and also, let's say, citizens at large. And uh, here you see that uh, the goals uh, concern protection, response, and development. Uh, protection, uh, you could understand what it refers to, which is, uh, let's say, preparation, uh, uh, strengthening of cyber resilience. Response uh, in terms of activities, reactive uh, actions, uh, to be done in case of uh, incidents and in the prevention of incidents and development, which is, let's say, the kind of long-term activities that are needed to make sure that uh, protection is uh, uh, enforced and response is effective. Together with these uh, three major goals, uh, the, the agency has, uh, stated in the strategy that there is a number of uh, major enables, enablers. Uh, the, the one which I want to mention here, beside cooperation, which is both at the national and the international level, is uh, the, the issue of cybersecurity and uh, awareness. And here comes uh, what uh, both uh, you and me are definitely interested in me because this is my my task uh, in the agency and you because uh, you are educators or students uh, interested in, uh, in cyber security and here i want to mention that uh, uh, enisa which is the european agency for cyber security uh, published uh, three years ago three years and a half ago a report on uh, the status of cyber security education in europe uh, stressing the fact that there is a, lot, a lack of qualified professionals in, in, in this field, in the labor market. And 
more important the fact that this uh, is an issue both from the economic point of view and uh, from national security because uh, as we all know the world is now highly interconnected and so we should all be concerned with the fact that uh, uh there is uh, this uh, shortage and gap in in the labor market in terms of cybersecurity professionals so let us say that uh, uh, this is really a significant problem uh, as uh, my colleagues uh, uh, in the room know i'm not really a cybersecurity expert i'm a computer engineering professor uh, who was asked uh, uh, to to help uh, with education in cybersecurity? So it is uh, uh, easy and uh, obvious for me to uh, to uh, confirm that the shortage of cyber specialists is just an instance of a more general shortage in the IT sector and probably even more in the IT in the entire. Uh, scientific and technological world, the STEM disciplines. How do you deal with such a kind of problem? Uh, problem probably having a clear goal and an approach that is structured. It includes uh, many different actions. The, the, the clear goal is that uh, cybersecurity is important for all, information technologies are important for all, and we need uh, uh, really to grow in terms of uh, numbers and in terms of quality of specialists in IT in general and in cybersecurity specifically. Moreover, uh, not only do we need specialists, but uh, given that uh, cybersecurity and IT appears everywhere, we need to make sure that whoever has uh, responsibilities responsibilities at any level corporate intermediate operational uh, they must know how to give uh, the right role the right weight to uh, technologies where right uh, i put into quotes because uh, it is not so easy to to define the concept means in my opinion acceptance awareness mature approach non-fideistic approach uh, collaboration between people with different skills. I will come back to this, but uh, I consider this point a, a really major one. Uh, when I say that we need a structured approach, this means uh, that uh, we need education and training at all levels and aimed at everybody. So it is uh, very interesting that uh, today we do have uh, representative from industry because they can give uh, their point of view. I mean, uh, as an agency, we do collaborate with uh, industry at national and international level because we know that um, the problem is relevant for all. Before entering into the detail, uh, I mean, uh, a major issue I want to, to, to mention is the fact that uh, all initiatives uh, must really be inclusive with reference to all groups that are underrepresented especially gender uh, i'm not there so i I'm, I'm not able to see uh, what is the situation in terms of gender gap uh, in in the audience uh, but uh, what uh, what i see is that all the speakers are male here which is uh, a confirmation of of the gender gap and uh, so let me confirm that we re really need specific actions uh, to, to reduce uh, the gender gap and uh, unfair treatment. I'm sure that the University of Padua is going, uh, is working in this direction, but it is always important to, to, to confirm, uh, to repeat uh, this, uh, this point. Uh, we do need uh, specialists uh, at all levels. Uh, um, I mean, we all know the various levels of education. I don't want to go into details now, but uh, uh, if we are educators, so we, we are in industry, we should be really 
uh, aware of the fact that we need to work in the various direction. Let me say that, for example, uh, we as uh, uh, academicians, as professors, uh, we are often interested in uh, the higher level PhD, the masters. So we are presenting a master's program today, and this is definitely important. But as citizens, we really need uh, to be uh, keen at promoting education at, at all levels. Obviously, uh, bachelor's, master's, and PhD program are the most important, uh, especially the technical ones. But before entering in, into some detail, not that much because I don't have time, I want to comment uh, on, uh, on another issue. Uh, this is taken from a talk I gave uh, five years ago at an event organized by the university directors. And in that uh, framework, uh, I I stress the fact that the market uh, continues to require specialists, but uh, this is not enough. In fact, uh, just a few days before that uh, event, uh, I listened uh, on the web uh, to, to another event uh, held in parliament uh, um, during the so-called Internet Day 2018. And there, a high-level government uh, officer at one with technical background, said that technological skills are needed. And he said the sentence which I put in quotes, in quotes, which is essentially what he said. In the public administration, we have few computer scientists and too many lawyers. Uh, I'm a computer scientist, I'm an engineer, but uh, I think uh, this, is, was not, this was not uh, the proper sentence to be, to be said in that framework. And in fact, it happened that the Minister for Public Administration, who is a lawyer, who was a lawyer at the time, um, uh, was kind of upset at that statement. Uh, she said lawyers uh, are important, uh, digitation must be reasonable and must involve everyone, even not specialists. And let me stress the final sentence here. Specialists must speak by making themselves understood. This is the major message I want to, to let you. Uh, many of computer scientists, and so I include myself in them, think that studying uh, our disciplines is enough uh, to apply them uh, to, to other domains, to any domains. And uh, moreover, one thing which is even worse, many of people outside our discipline think that computer technologies are just commodities and they can be used without knowing them at all. And this is uh, unfortunately, or fortunately, is absolutely wrong. Uh, computer scientists must be aware of the importance of uh, application domains. Specialists in the various domains, or at least uh, a fraction of them, uh, need to be able to understand the principles of technology because they need to interact. So my major message is cybersecurity and computer science is not an island. We need dialogue between specialists and domain experts. And it is interesting that uh, the master's program in cybersecurity, which we are presenting today, uh, follows this direction because obviously it has deep technical uh, content, but at the same time, it includes uh, great attention to, to, to the other disciplines uh, from law to economics uh, to other application domains because this is really crucial in uh, in our field but i would say in all technological fields um, final word and i'm done uh, i mentioned uh, the, the the enisa reports and one interesting thing is that uh, ENISA published a, a report uh, about a year ago in September uh, describing a number of uh, role profiles which show how different uh, features uh, exist in cybersecurity, features that could lead uh, to 12 or 14, I don't remember, different role profiles, which I'm not going to to discuss into detail because I want to comment that uh, indeed the job market is very dynamic. So there are many different things that can be studied in cybersecurity as well as in another in other disciplines. Uh, it is important to go deep, but at the same, at the same time, it is important to go broad 
and as I said, broad with attention to other disciplines, broad with respect to technology. And so my message to students uh, is that uh, there is a complex picture, there is a lot of room for all interested people, but it is really important to be in to study technical issues, to be expert in technical issues, at the same time to be able to interact uh, with others because the field is broad, the field is renewing, you need to be study to be able to keep on studying all time. And uh, that's more or less what I wanted to, to say. Thank you so much. Thanks, Paolo. Thanks for sharing this uh, important view. And uh, I mean, of course, uh, underlining again the importance of the education uh, in the cybersecurity field. Uh, if there is any quick question from the audience, we can uh, take it. Otherwise, we'll move on. Yes. Uh, yeah, maybe you can come here. Good morning, Professor. Can you hear me? Sure. OK. Uh, I guess so. Um, I wanted to ask um, um, uh, um, specific thing. Um, I, uh, let me introduce myself. I'm Sverre Cavazin. I'm the student representative for uh, the Master Degree in Cybersecurity. I almost finished with my um, with my journey here. But uh, what I would uh, like to ask is a frequent recurring question by our students and my colleagues, also from the one already enrolled and the perspective ones, and it's. Uh, last year, we had uh, the pleasure to meet uh, uh, Nunzia Ciardi at this, uh, this event, uh, and we asked her uh, already. Uh, the problem with the, what is not understood with the agency is um, uh, which can be the role of um, the, the students in cybersecurity uh, during and at the end of their journey, because we saw that um, uh, there is a plan uh, guided by government um, um, uh, competitions uh, for the uh, enrollment and the assumptions of, the, um, sorry, and the um, working of positions for students and uh, graduates in cybersecurity. The problem is that what we saw is that there was an initial batch uh, available for graduates, even without experience, but then uh, they started to be more of a uh, logistic personnel or uh, an economical point of view uh, from finance and so on. So one thing that the students would like to know is which can be the opportunities for the, um, for the students, the graduated students and the prospective students in the case of an internship or something like that. And also if uh, uh, the opportunities within uh, the the agency that, as you told, uh, also have a collaboration with the, the special for the uh, armed forces uh, and the defense forces is available also to students that do not have an Italian citizenship. Thank you so much. Okay, uh, thank you for the question. Uh, for what concerns uh, your final question, I believe that uh, so far, maybe things could change in the future, but uh, I believe that so far jobs uh, at uh, ACN are reserved for Italian citizens because of, uh, I mean, the, the, the traditional requirements about national security. Uh, but let me, say, let me say two things. The first one is that uh, the, 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 the agency is, uh, uh, has now about 150 uh, people, some of whom are on a temporary position. As uh, uh, Professor Conti said, I am on leave of absence from my university, and there are about uh, 20 people or so who have temporary positions, uh, which means that uh, in the future they will probably go back to, to their previous jobs uh, or Maybe if they are old enough, uh, in the same way as I am, maybe they will retire at some point. Uh, but uh, which means uh, that uh, there is going to be uh, turnover in the agency as well as uh, there is uh, in other in other institutions. That's the first point. Second point: we are now 150. Uh, we plan to be about 300. Uh, in a year or so, and to 
keep on growing in in the near future so uh, there will be uh, openings uh, uh, further openings in the future um at the same time you asked the why uh, i mean what is the specific attention to uh, cybersecurity graduates let me say that uh, i mentioned the fact that uh, cybersecurity needs uh, collaboration between uh, uh, people in different uh, areas different subject because it's a technical problem but not only a technical problem and this is the reason for which the agency is also hiring people with uh, with different background but let me stress one major point obviously the agency is definitely a very interesting uh, institution but the the, 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 the major point uh, i want to to stress uh, is that uh, uh, cyber security is uh, a, a, a profession which is relevant for everybody which has many openings i mean the goal of the agency is uh, mainly to let the the, the country the the the, uh, the country grow uh, both for uh, i mean uh public service and private organization so i think that uh, the fact that uh, we are having openings uh, from time to time should not be seen as a limitation because uh, uh, there is a really lot of room in many other positions in the agency in other government institutions and uh, and uh, on the private market or in the semi-private market with companies owned by the government. So I don't think that uh, the concern about job openings uh, uh, should, uh, sorry for the, for, for the joke, really concern you. Thank you, thanks for uh, the answer. Uh, is there any other question? Okay, if not, uh, I would thanks again, uh, uh, Professor Adzeni. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, if you can, happy, if you can uh, stay, uh, remain connected uh, with us. Um, I will. Thank you. Uh, so I would move on with the next speaker, uh, Dr. Uh, Massimo Tedeschi, Chief Technology Officer, Division, Division uh, Cybersecurity of Leonardo SPA. Thank you. First of all, I wish to thank you for being here in this historical place. It's very an honor for me. And the second is something like a joke. I just opened my desk for having application for also for people that uh, wish to be applied to Leonardo. Why Leonardo is so interested in about cybersecurity? Maybe that you know Leonardo for different kind of product and solution. We are a, a larger company, global company for the aerospace defense and security. Try to also use integrated uh, a solution for uh, both military, but also civil uh, application. We, we build helicopter, you see a lot of helicopter. We make a lot of activity on search and rescue for saving people. We also have some uh, division that uh, try to support the electronic defense and security, uh, not only for the activity of uh, defense, but also uh, defense for the, the protecting the people and also uh, aeronautics. We also build uh, um, airplanes. We build uh, part of airplanes. And that one of the, our uh, activity, very interesting now is the space, uh, not only launching uh, uh, um, satellite or other mission in the space, but also building some security solution for this. Uh, our division is uh, the cyber and security division is uh, I have the, the aim of trying to uh, ensure the security of the ecosystem in, uh, in our country and try also to guarantee the resilience of the critical assets. The critical assets sort of from uh, uh, government, from uh, large enterprise, larger critical enterprise, and in general, all the activity that 
could be also guarantee the sovereignty and uh, in a, also a pan-European approach that should be absolutely important now. You have seen the consequences about COVID or about, about the war, about the supply chain of materials. Uh, we also have some activity in national secure digital transformation, for example, for the public cloud. We have also the, the role of protecting the, the, the cloud and we are absolutely interested about the, the technical solution, how we can protect uh, and uh, prevent the activity and the privacy of the people that Italian uh, country about the, managing the information on the cloud. We also protect infrastructure, try to also support not only with services and security operation center, but also with product and technical solution, the large enterprise the critical infrastructure. We make also professional communication. Yes, in the name we call cyber division, but also we make some solution about security. So we make a, a professional communication mission critical for supporting the police forces and first responder in Italy and abroad the world. And uh, trying to also make uh, our life more comfortable in the cities try to make arrangement for the transportation in train or perhaps buses. We make a solution for monitoring and uh, uh, optimizing the road for the um, buses in the city and uh, managing also global security. How big we are as a, a cybersecurity? We are the smallest division in the group of Leonardo. In only 2,000 people, we have five strategic assets in Italy and also abroad in UK, but also in, uh, in um, other countries like Riyadh or Brussels. And also we have this a very interesting uh, activity also with the uh, uh, Professor Atseni told uh, related to the training. We also have just built a cyber academy in Jena and abroad. It can be useful, but we have some light after. And also we have got a lot of laboratories. Yes, one of the things that we have absolutely interested in how we can support the research, not only inside, but in an open innovation way. One of the activities that also the Leonardo groups have tried to build is also some uh, corporate laboratories. We have uh, 11 laboratories uh, in Italy, one in USA, related to different technology, a technology related to rotary wings, related to aircraft, related to the quantum computing, related to the artificial intelligence, big data, and future security and activity in cyber. And also we have invested in this kind of research, also uh, buying one of the most powerful uh, uh, HPC, uh, high performance computing uh, for the um, our space defense sector uh, is a Da Vinci one in Genova, and, and now we are implementing that one because it should be absolutely fundamental for us uh, understanding how we can try to uh, boost our capability and technology, special on cyber, special on cybersecurity, cryptography, and other kind of activities. Should be very interesting how we can try to support and how should be useful the flow of people that could be support us with the most important product we have, the people, the resources. We have the opportunity of monitoring, unfortunately, I can say the activity worldwide. We had our global security center in Kieti that is 24 hours for seven days, 365 per day. We managing 130 countries with this kind of security operation center. We got uh, 5 million indicators per year, and we are able to identify 137,000 events and led and for a second. And also we, at the end of this flow, this kind of process, we also having to, co to cope with 2001 600 incident on cybersecurity. You can imagine that this kind of activity is not based only on technology, but it's based especially for special analysis, malware analysts, uh, penetration test, uh, vulnerability assessment. So we need a lot of capability that could support us in this way. And uh, we feel our idea is that we have the privilege of having uh, data. We have the privilege of having information. So one of the ideas that we can build and that we have done it, a kind of cyber information superiority, something like a knowledge base about the threats that we have coped with from critical infrastructure, not government infrastructure, but also one of the activity that related to Leonardo itself. You can imagine that in the past, one of the threats should be related to the, um, not so much on defense activity. You can imagine helicopters, a radar or something kind of on the or, or platform like that. But those kind of solutions are intended as closed with any contacts with the external sources with internet. 
Now we have to re-engineer this kind of solution, protecting them. So one of the items that should be absolutely interested for us is trying to develop the OT security, understanding how we can try to develop the new solution platform security by design in a cyber resilience approach, something not related, not related only to guarantee the security and the protection, but also guarantee the cyber resilience, understand if the mission could be uh, uh, usable and uh, approachable also in, under attack of a cyber attack. So you can imagine that this kind of solution of knowledge base should be useful for understanding the threats, understanding the defeats, understanding with also the contribution of people, the malware analysts, which will be the best of breed of the activity of the, um, of the hackers, of the state sponsorship activities, whatever else. We also define something that's useful also to uh, trying the information from the device, something like a telemetry, incident response, threat hunting. One is, it is important, the cybersecurity the time to market is understanding how your response should be absolutely useful and fast to block to uh, reduce the the the, the the risk and also the effects of an attacks. And at the end, also, we are not able to understand what kind of attacks. And we're thinking that building some like a sandbox that can be useful for understanding the behavior of some files, some new kind of threats should be, for, should be absolutely useful for understanding this kind of activity. We also build a cyber range that can be useful for making a digital twin. We cannot try to attack for understanding the, the capability and the effort to support the critical infrastructure. So we have ability to make a digital twin of this kind of solution and attack it in the individual world. Understanding will be also the solution, it will be the best configuration to protect these assets. And it's very interesting how we try to drive the new technology the research that you are thinking about. One of the activities that I also told before is the advanced incident response capability. We need to manage this kind of huge number of data. We're talking about the big data in the past, but uh, we cannot uh, make this kind of activity alone, also to the people. So we have to, uh, we have to develop the new approach, perhaps using also artificial intelligence solution to define it to managing the magnitude and optimizing the posture also for incident response to try to minimize the effects. Also, at least uh, thinking about uh, vault security, something that can support and not only protecting the data on backup. You know that perhaps ransomware, the first target for ransomware is the backup activity, not only the system, because when you destroy and you uh, classify and you cook, um, uh, uh, block on any kind of, of the um, backup, you can uh, avoiding to put on the on the market, put online the new system. So we're thinking about uh, defining a new technology that are able on physical and also having a homomorphic computing cryptography to protect this data and guarantee at least some of the most important utility and the use, uh, uh, services that you have to provide. Imagine ATM for banks, at least also under attack, you have to guarantee at least this kind of services. Threat hunting, you know, every time that uh, you have to cope with a new threats, you can find another thousand of threats. And thinking about uh, the solution like uh, chat GPT on defining and building a new chat GPT on code, you can try to uh, guarantee and produce a, a variant of this code and it can be useful for a different attack. So we have to manage an understanding perhaps is the family of this kind of malware should be different. And that is the importance about the malware analysis. So we are looking for technology and using also artificial intelligence to identify the code of some malware, identify the, uh, the call of function, understanding how you can change uh, perhaps the attribution and uh, new threats uh, that, that can be related to different family of threats, the uh, other malware. And also, also the uh, um, natural language uh, processing should be absolutely useful perhaps to building and to making reports, uh, reports uh, target and uh, the tailored on different uh, approaches that you can understand this different the approach of uh, a state sponsorship of hackers uh, that try to gather information and at a low level, understand that it is absolutely unuseful to take alarm and uh, ransomware that uh, wish to be the, the, the most important news on the net and perhaps having the, the capability of ransomware, uh, of having the runs from, from, uh, from the, the victims. Perhaps now we will see from our security officer that uh, 
the ramso itself is not only for the target but also for the customer of the targets so if also could give the information to the customer that the valuable information of who is managing the data it's a pressure for paying the ransom that should be another type of uh, ttps that uh, we have seen and also behavior analysis back because uh, it's very interesting that uh, as i said so before at least uh, you, we know that uh, there is something also you can have the best solution the best system the best uh, process but at least there is always some people that click on this kind of links on this kind of activity that's very important the awareness because of the, the 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 failure is always the 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 the, the people human activity and the words of this kind of approach and you also try to understand for behavior analysis also from a different side especially for the threat intelligence for understanding threat uh, calling some uh, serious TV criminal minds, which will be the next step that a criminal threat actor should follow for having these uh, results. That should be absolutely useful for understanding false positive. Because I can understand, uh, taking all the activity of logs, perhaps uh, of incident response, threat hunting, or EDR. But if you follow, which will be the final target of the of the criminal, you can understand that each signal that you can acquire should be useful or not for this kind of purpose. And you can absolutely uh, reduce the number of false positives that you are up with. Uh, this user authentication, we have tried to understand how we can integrate activity also with the behavior analysis and also uh, biometrics are useful, but also training, that, that's a, the very important thing. You have to stress it to test the activity and the response, the process of uh, an organization it should be government, should be uh, private activity. And that should be absolutely useful for a cyber range. You can uh, try to make a model like uh, uh, what if, uh, what if I change the, 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 the configuration? What I change the approach uh, for managing this kind of information? That's just so absolutely useful. And you can understand how should be useful the flow, the, 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 the use of people that can useful for drive this kind of TV special, not only an IT system, but also for OT system. Imagine how it could be easier to perhaps uh, block down helicopters if you are not, use, uh, are not sure that uh, the supply chain for firmware updating should be absolutely controlled. You, do you don't you don't have to send a health fire, but you can only use a pen drive to block some helicopter on the, on the field. That should be absolutely interesting. And also, we are thinking that artificial intelligence should be another um, asset that we have coped with. One of our cap capability, both for Leonardo Labs and also our division, is artificial intelligence. And we try to make research on different fields from cybersecurity for malware detection of uh, based on uh, uh, um, adversary network comparison embedding similarity about the malware's uh, anomaly detection using transformers or perhaps other kind of activity not related on cybersecurity but investigation we are using uh, uh, various uh, artificial intelligence product and solution for uh, making a super resolution imaging or perhaps tracking people we have uh, just trying to make a poc for um, search and rescue for helicopters, useful for Socor Solpino, you know what, you're, what they're talking about, that perhaps during the winter, during the summer, they lost a lot of people on the mountains. It is very difficult for a drone or perhaps helicopters identify this kind of people on this kind of field, uh, snow, rocks, uh, trees, and we are making an algorithm, artificial intelligence algorithm to identify these people, integrating not only the real images, fortunately they are not so much, but also uh, synthetic data. That should be absolutely interesting. And imagine how you can try to apply, apply this kind of technology to malware analysis. I can say that you are able to compare the, the picture of a malware, the code in black and white, one channel, identify which be the difference and the area of this kind of approach, identify the, 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 uh, the, mali, the family malware, the malware family, and using absolutely visually, uh, artificially man intelligence applied on, uh, on images, or perhaps activity on audio, uh, video voice isolation, perhaps in, imagine for the activity of uh, predictive maintenance. We build the helicopters, the blade of helicopters are very, very uh, sensitive for tracking. So we have built a solution that uh, listening uh, the hammer on the blade are able to understand if perhaps there is some cracks. 
But if I have a, a machine that can support this kind of approach, it would be absolutely interesting to understand if perhaps I have to change this kind of blade. But at the end, what should be also the activity for you, for people that are just leaving perhaps the training activity? We are thinking that open innovation approach should be absolutely important for us. And we cannot are able to build by us only this kind of solution. We are looking for a, an ecosystem based not only from Leonardo, but also other companies like uh, Sci4 Gate or any kind of activity that should be useful for building some technological bricks. But also the opportunity for people that have a very good idea. We have built a business innovation factory. It's a startup accelerator with, that we have just started uh, last year in Rome, trying to accelerate some companies. We are making a first batch in October 22 and uh, two items for 2022, servitization and autonomous system. You can imagine uh, some of the top research would be interested for Leonardo, but also we have 160 applicants for this application for this kind of accelerator. We also have a short list of 20 and 10 of these short uh, start startups should be part of accelerator program. But it's not only all support the activity of uh, making the accelerator. We give money for this company to make part of the acceleration, but also Leonardo should invest in equity Literally, a company of five, we are talking about 500 skill euro for the, the company that should be interested for us. And for cyber division, last year we also select a company that is based on confidential computing. You know that confidential computing is another branch of homomorphic computing that is allowing not only to protect the, the information and the data where on the, on the transit line and to end cryptography or perhaps uh, uh, on storage on the, on the database, but also when you use the data. You are able to manage the data, on cipher data, without touching them, without having to open the data. So it should be absolutely interesting how you can try to protect the privacy of the information, the privacy of data, both for a public security cloud, but you can imagine for health data, health information that you have to protect for privacy issue. And also this year, we are trying to start again this kind of approach. Uh, we have a 50 kilo euro in cash for each startups that enter in the acceleration. We have a proof of concept directly with Leonardo Division. So you have capability of having the needs, uh, Professor Atzeni called about the domain, that should be absolutely interesting, how you can take, make the research apply to some problem that you have to solve. And also, theory of the item should be absolutely interesting for this year, should be simulation and gamification. The other one, what network security. And for network security, one of the our needs is something that related to the zero trust security application, data protection, quantum computing. Our laboratory is also uh, interested about quantum computing, not only from a calculation point of view, make, making quantum computer should be absolutely useful for making some difficult, difficult, difficult problem to solve, but also to protect the data, to develop another kind of algorithm that should be quantum, post-quantum protected, that should be not uh, influenced by a quantum computer cracking activities. And perhaps also the communication. One of the problem is transferring the information from the heart, perhaps to the space. You can imagine how should be useful to have a quantum K distribution, the captivity of managing the quantum K for uh, protecting communication between the earth and the space. And uh, uh, finally, also the Leonardo uh, Academy, that's in, that something that should be absolutely interesting for us to improve the activity of training people, not only the people inside Leonardo and inside also the other division. Because as I said before, you have to build that capability and understanding for how you can try to make uh, cybersecurity by design, any kind of product, any kind of solution, but also try to make a specialized training activity more deeply, more deep inside in this kind of training. With the also immersive training impacts, but especially using some platform that we have built like Cyber Range. So you have the ability of hands-on to using directly technology and trying to, and the Cyber Trainer is uh, at something that as, as a special training uh, activity that you can uh, um, use to provide to the customer, to the um, uh, um, to, to whose the training activity is oriented on making hands-on, making laboratories activity. And also we have a um, a space in Genova in also visual activity to man manage this kind of, of events and uh, um, uh, training uh, courses. 
at the end, we should be also our academic network. We also have some uh, partnership. Uh, we have make conference and events. Uh, we make uh, career days and talent acquisition events. I've just uh, opened the desk for application for uh, uh, the people that just attended the master, but also make collaboration innovation with uh, technological development projects. Also, we attend to a lot of uh, uh, European research program, uh, EDF, uh, Horizon Europe, and other kind of activities. So we are looking for researchers. And also we make with our university a lot of agreement for having PhD and research contracts. Uh, we can support thesis and internship and also making some professional courses, uh, first and second level master to integrate our capability. That should be absolutely interesting for us. Any question? Please. Um, at the moment, um, uh, which are the main um, uh, areas in which you are seeking for collaboration with uh, uh, students or graduates? Um, and also uh, a curiosity, are there already open positions for PhD contracts and uh, uh, collaboration with the University of Padua? Yeah. And also, sorry for the last questions, um, about our like foreign students, which do not have a citizenship and are seeking com uh, to continue their studies or uh, working in Italy, there will be the possibility. Thank you so much. Okay. First of all, we have a lot of position open, especially for our cyber division. I have to confess that at the moment we have 150 position open. We have some very, very huge problem about gathering the people because uh, it's very difficult. The uh, very smart and uh, um, professional are not so, uh, are very rare in Italy. Some people go uh, abroad, but we have the opportunity of uh, uh, having the um, uh, position open in Italy. For, I can say, large, uh, I can say, more generic activity. I can say like cloud, you can imagine how it should be our effort to managing the national public cloud. For on cybersecurity, we need a lot of malware analysts. And it's very difficult because the malware analyst sometimes not useful from the training of academic world because you have to cope with the real world. We have to cope with the attacks that you can see on the security operation center. We need some software engineer based on a cybersecurity activity, building a kernel space uh, EDR or perhaps OT activity should absolutely need it for us. And we are very problem about uh, having this kind of information. The OT area should be one of the most important area that we have to cope with. So those are a lot of position open and on, on this kind of activity. First. Second um, is the um, PhD, right? Yes, we have still made some activity also with the uh, professor about artificial intelligence and cybersecurity. So we absolutely open in this kind of approach. And we have just talked before with professor uh, uh, about the uh, possibility of, um, of um, having a larger number of a PhD or research on this field. The field that we have directly as a division we have coped with is artificial intelligence in cyber. We have a very few people on that, should be absolutely interesting. Artificial intelligence related to the uh, video and the audio analytics, NLP. You can imagine that we are absolutely interested on uh, um, the last resource of artificial intelligence like chat GPT, understand if perhaps we are able to build our uh, on-prem chat GPT solution premises that should be useful for our product. Imagine only for services on helicopters should be something that should be absolutely useful for this kind of activity. And you cannot share on the web this kind of information, but also other activity like uh, quantum computing. Uh, uh, so also mathematics people that should be useful for understanding how we can integrate the post quantum algorithms or perhaps uh, we are absolutely interested now in satcoms that should be absolutely useful for us for integrating our platform for mission critical communication also using satellite communication and you can imagine what should be also the the new challenge about space we are just one as a cyber division the managing of ESA uh, European Space Agency Security Operations Center and we have to cope with this kind of activity we have also another uh, opportunity that we are a target 
Leonardo is a target for a lot of attacks. So we have to cope with this kind of attacks and we learn a lot of activity on this field. And we have read it to try to protect also infrastructure like European specialists or perhaps uh, the DigiConnect, the European uh, Commission. The third, uh, Yes, we are open also to foreign people, for people that could be, uh, come from abroad. We are also in the laboratory of uh, artificial intelligence, but only in, uh, uh, I guess, in, in the uh, most part of the 11 uh, Leonardo Labs, we have position for people that from, uh, from abroad. And there should be also an interesting another activity that uh, I try to, to, to make in these uh, few months, uh, because we are looking for a company and uh, I can say, uh, technological bricks that can be useful for having inside our supply chain. Um, we are looking also for other um, small companies, startups that come from abroad. We have seen on the um, uh, business vision uh, uh, factory that we have uh, 41% coming from abroad Italy. And we are looking, for example, for Israel, but you know that in Israel from cyber security, there is one of the most important activity and training because for the army, because they train directly from the army, having this kind of capability. But we are not interested about taking, I can say, business partnership with them. We are thinking about taking the technological bricks, bring this kind of technological bricks inside our supply chain, control the supply chain, because we have to respect the activity of national or as European sovereignty of the technology. So absolutely, we are open to any kind of application also from people that come from other countries. The research is research. Thank you. Other question? Thanks again, uh, Massimo, for your uh, presentation and handling uh, already the questions. Uh, so we heard that companies are definitely looking for, for people skilled in cybersecurity. I think uh, worldwide, some statistics give numbers like five, five million. Yes, of course, it's rough estimation, but I mean, the order of magnitude, you can understand. And in Italy, of course, we have our piece of the pie of needs of people. Uh, and definitely what I hear, I mean, as the head of the degree, continuously companies are asking, okay, can you send people? Can you send people? Definitely the number of people we can graduate is like epsilon with respect to the need uh, of the market and, and the institution. Okay, so thanks again. Uh, I would now uh, give the floor to uh, Enrico Fazio, which is uh, Chief Customer Manager and uh, Marketing Officer at uh, Cyphergate. Thanks for being with us. So good morning to everybody, uh, professor, student, thanks very much for giving to Cyphergate and me this enormous opportunity. As I stated before, tomorrow, this will be one of the experience I will probably tell to my nephew. I once was in Palazzo Poa speaker. So it's really, really an enthusiastic for, for this uh, opportunity. So I am now here uh, in front of you and I'm very happy to see a crowded classroom. We still have to work a bit on gender gap. So this is also why Cyphergate is a, a proud collaborator with Women for Cyber. Madam, please take note, Women for Cyber for a subscription. Uh, and uh, last week I was in Rimini, uh, We Make Future. Who of you were there? Is, is, was anybody there in Rimini, We Make Future? Nobody? But it, it was really a, a very nice event. And this time was so crowded that we had more than 60,000 of, uh, of, of persons visiting the, the, this exposition that is a digital, digital exposition. So the two experiences tell us that digital cybersecurity is becoming more and more important. And, and you know why? Because we are in the middle of digital revolution. So I, I like to say digital revolution uh, is uh, the most important revolution of uh, human being, as, as stated by Arari, meaning this with by this, and he's a philosopher, not me, so much more clever than me. Uh, he say that this is much more important than the discovery of fire, invent, invention of, of writing, discovery of, of electricity. So we are really in a huge revolution. And, and I like to say that this revolution is the natural, evolution of uh, the scientific revolution that happens 
four centuries ago, very close to here, uh, and, and was the, the revolution made by Galileo Galilei. Uh, why I say that is the same thing? Because one of the way of explaining digital revolution is, is uh, starting from the name. So what is digital? Is uh, digitization, so transforming what is possible in numbers, in figures. And the intuition comes from Galileo. For the first time, he said, OK, if I can transform in, in numbers what I see, probably I can make the correlation between the events in mathematical formula, uh, transforming and, and, and empowering the experience, letting this become knowledge that allow me to make forecasting and better knowledge and so on. So same applies for what we are making now. Uh, why we are only making now, uh, since Galileo, uh, all the scientific people try to bring in mathematics all what they studied. So it, it is an experience we had from for, for centuries. So we started with, with uh, the, let me say, movement and temperature of inanimated matters, classical physics. It was easier. Then we started with the more complex things, so medicine, chemistry, art, some, somebody here made some very deep study in arts, like Paolo Cello, that studied the perspective and so on. So everything went into mathematics, then we went to economics. So everybody tried to bring in mathematics what they know. And the very uh, curious thing is each and every time somebody tried to do this, it works. So meaning by this, that probably mathematics is uh, the language of interpreting all the nature. So this is very powerful, this was known, but till now there was not so massive in import of, in mathematics of, of reality because we were not able to make big storage of quantitative numbers, big computation, a correlation of quantitative number, but now we have because technology brought us computer. And so we can now start digital revolutions. So what is meaning that now, Mathematics is, is a sort of a black hole capturing and all, all the science and so on, or as I prefer, is the language embracing all the possible ontologies. And this is why we are now in digital revolution. So everything is going there. So everybody is going there, not only the good ones. as, as So the bad ones, the criminals or the, the possible uh, government agency that make attack to the, to the opponent, are also working in digitals. So think about the criminals. Uh, 20 years ago, if you were a criminal and you want to have money, you have to go on a shop, for example, with a weapon possibly, and face the person in front of you, ask for money, uh, possibly making violence, risking to have police capturing you. Now it is much easier to go on the web, attacking a company probably in Australia, risking almost nothing, do not making violence. I don't think there are people that are really black people as it was depicted in the American film. No, so there is nobody likes violence. So now it's easier to go on the web. So now, as there are a lot of bad people working on the digital, and as all the world is going digital, more and more is needed people that defend and try to contain what are the effect of these bad actions, let me say criminal action. And this is you, and this is why I think you are making the right choice to be in, in this classroom and start to start this course. Uh, the, the, the very last suggestion I give you is concerning the, the future after the degree. Uh, what will happen after your degree is that schematically you will have four different paths. Uh, first one, you will uh, keep the academic, so you will making research, research. You are training people, so very fascinating, very nice. Probably you will miss a bit of a practical effect of your results, but it's really probably the best solution. Second possibility you have, you will go on the market uh, and you will be in a company that is a system integrator, meaning um, learning all the solution for third parties and knowing where to apply these solutions uh, at the customer side, so uh, requiring uh, uh, a wide range of capability in interpreting solution of third parties, being always updating, and knowing what to choose, what to put, uh, results is uh, very practical. You always are happy because when you close the work, you see your customer that has got real the solution implemented. 
Second option, you will be in a company making a software house for cybersecurity. What is software house for cybersecurity? Uh, they develop software for cybersecurity with, with the requirement made for, from the customer. So they develop code. They are, have got, once again, wide range of competence because they have to write code for several solutions. But at the end, the product is never yours because the product is of your customer and possibly it will keep modifying and evolving the software without you because it will probably change the software out. So also this is a very nice solution, uh, but it's got is it, uh, back, back, um, back feedback. The third solution is to go in a company like Cyphergate. Uh, we are a tech vendor. Uh, what means tech vendor? is that the product we develop is our products. So we give, we, we take the, the, the requirement for developing the product from the market, trying to make a good interpretation of the market because if we miss, we do not sell. And then we continue developing our product for which we have the intellectual property proposing on the market, the, the final solution. The good thing is that uh, you, are, you are at the end very proud of what you do because it's your product. The bad part is that probably you are a bit too vertical because you cannot know everything. You are deep in one or two products and you keep uh, working on this. So what I suggest you during uh, your study is uh, for sure to study a lot because you have got uh, wonderful professors, a very good university, uh, but try to figure your mind what should be your best mission in these four solution you have. And eventually, if you can try to experience what could be the solution coming to making from staging, Cyphergate, Leonardo, or whatever, just to better understand, I am more software developer, I am more vendor, I am more system integrator, or I want to go on in the academics. So thanks to everybody and uh, waiting for your uh, request of collaboration with Cyphergate and good luck to everybody. Is there any question? Questions? Sure. Uh, so basically, uh, which are the uh, main opportunities that you will think uh, uh, can be available in, available in the sense of which are the uh, specific um, um, positions that uh, you are most in need at the moment or which you will be more interested to have students, for example, as you said, uh, secure software development, more that uh, um, deep learning capabilities, capabilities and uh, implementation in uh, uh, cybersecurity frameworks. Uh, um, so this is my first question, which, which, are, which are the, um, the things that uh, you will seek the most in uh, our students. The second one is uh, all, also always, uh, which uh, can be the opportunities for students that are not Italian to stay here, to study here or to collaborate with you. So this is my first. Uh, yes, thanks for the question. So the first answer, uh, we are um, developing uh, really hard in, in two parts. Uh, the first one is uh, related to the machine learning in order to better understand the attack as, as one of our product is a CM. So we already have machine learning, but we still have to continue in, in making, studying and updating the models, introducing new models in the roadmap. We hope to have at least one new model of machine learning each and every year. So this is one of the frame for which we can collaborate. Uh, this framework is absolutely good for, for a student as is a bit in advance with, with the issuing or the release of the software. The second opportunity we have is the, on the um, digital intelligence. So that part that trying to transform uh, in, in numbers, uh, the things that are not numbers. So the um, artificial intelligence that are more or less uh, uh, adding some, uh, some digital labels to what is not exactly digital. So how to interpret an image, a text or uh, a, a voice message. And this is a frame for which we are working, trying to uh, capture all the um, possible opportunity given from the market. So absolutely open uh, and absolutely challenging because everybody's running there, but we have, get, have got some solutions. So we, we keep working on this. So for the second question, for all this part, uh, no issue for, we are citizens of the world. So really no problem. 
uh, we have got a part of our company working um, in, in, in direct contact with um, law enforcement agencies. So for this part that are other staff in terms of, of protection of critical infrastructure and so on, we, we need to have uh, some uh, credentials in terms of citizenship and so on, but it is not all the parts. So. Yeah, as a last question, this is actually a question that I can ask to both three of you, the professor um, at Seni and the doctors um, uh, Fatsi and Tedeschi, um, because all of you uh, talked about the collaboration with the defense forces of our country. And uh, this is a personal curiosity, which, in your opinion, may be the difference in a um, professional that seeks a career path in either of the two. So in the civil environments with both academic uh, uh, point of view or uh, uh, seeking his expertise in a company, even on the scale of Leonardo or Cyforgate or also smaller companies, startups and so on, which in your opinions are the main difference in the kind of jobs and in uh, uh, the requirements that uh, um, uh, the people may have to comply? I will try, that's my opinion. First is a time to market. Uh, for the civil market, uh, as uh, also Enrico have to cope with, we have a very, very fast uh, time to market to, 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 to manage. So uh, the capability of building product solution is very, very fast. Uh, at, uh, at the end, in one year, you have to produce your product. Perhaps you could have other startups that can be absolutely more effective than you. So you have to identify the best of breed, identify who will be the best solution for solution for having this problem solved. In approach based on defense, you have first a, a more relaxed, I can say, approach because uh, usually when you have to make some platform, uh, the, the time to build this kind of platform is, is larger, is uh, more on the, on, the, on the time. For example, perhaps you have news on the, on, the, on the newspaper, there's a very new important program that is Kate GCAP, is the new sixth generation uh, fighter. And uh, we, I don't, should be uh, in my vision when we we'll attend to Leonardo because uh, the first flight should be in 2035. But you can imagine which should be the requirements of this kind of platform in 2035 from a cyber point of view. So that should be absolutely interested. You can imagine, you can identify which will be the problem, the, 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 the threats or perhaps the capability that you have to provide this kind of activity. And usually those are a very, very important, a large program that you have to manage with. So that's the difference. Uh, I suppose that should be absolutely interesting for both. Maybe that if you want to see the state of the art of that technology should be absolutely more uh, faster when you have to cope with the civil market uh, and this kind of activity. But in defense, you have to manage a very, very large program and uh, more effective also from, I can say, our countries. Yes, I, I agree. Uh, so the, the point I add is that um, in my opinion, there are differences in, in three levels. First, uh, the, the customer level, so for, for the defense uh, and, and intelligence, uh, uh, you are driven by your customers. They tell you, you have to develop this algorithm because this is needed by the, the nation. Uh, the second point is the time of reaction. And so that is not only time, it's also competition. The, the dramatic competition of the market is uh, exciting for sure, but it's so tough. Uh, and the third one, uh, consequence of the first two is uh, the, the set of minds of, of the people working in one of the other. Uh, thinking about the civil market, you always have to look, you always have to share in order to find the best solution also in the market and integrating this. In the other way around, where you work in the defense sector, for sure you have to look, but you do not have to talk, never. So you cannot share what you make and you cannot possibly use um, open source solution and develop yourself. So it's really a set of mind a bit different. Just a, a, a question to the student to ask the question. Uh, was the question related uh, to, to the way 
entities, institutions, companies work, or were you asking about the kind of work that you do when you are within these organizations? So was that the interest uh, with respect to the career of students or what? Uh, exactly, it was the, the, uh, the latter, the second one. Uh, the point was uh, what, why should a student, in this case with Italian citizenship, because obviously we are talking about the uh, armed forces, but um, which will be, for example, a difference in someone motivated in pursuing a career in cybersecurity to decide either to take part of a, in a competition for a scientific officer, an engineer officer in the army or in the guard di finanza or in the carabinieri, or um, with the difference respect to joining, for example, a big company like Leonardo or a, a CNN or the agency, the national agency, for example. I mean, there is, in my opinion, uh, there are many answers. There is not one specific answer. Uh, the colleagues from industry uh, described the major points on, on the, 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 let's say, the, the, the duration of, I mean, of the long term versus short term goals. Let me say that uh, um, one additional point uh, is that. Uh, uh, in the armed forces, uh, in the public administration, the approach is often more the approach of uh, uh, the one who defines specifications. Let me say uh, the approach is that of the customer, whereas companies uh, are mainly providers in this context. Obviously, a great challenge for public administration for ACN, for the armed forces, is to be innovators also as customers, which is by no means trivial because uh, uh, sometimes there is no competition. And so we do feel kind of relaxed, which is wrong, obviously. But uh, this is definitely uh, one thing. If you are in companies, especially as medium size or small, but even if you are in big companies, I mean, competition is always there and you need to be able to show that you are the best, you are the solution that the customer needs. But obviously, as I said in my, my talk in the beginning, I mean, the world is complex and you need to be able to, to work on the various sides of the market and uh, all of them are interesting and obviously uh, the suggestion, I mean, the suggestion I give to my children is always to, to look around and to try to understand the various opportunities. Uh, there need not be one which is clearly better than the other. Uh, you, you should try, you should experience, and then you will understand what is best for you. Okay, thank you so much to uh, all, all the three of you. Uh, it was very exhaustive answers and uh, really interesting. Then I will take just a quick second to uh, tell the students, these were actually my questions because I am interested in these kind of career paths. So I really advise you, if you have any doubt or question on what you would like to do in the next years, take these opportunities to ask uh, uh, these professionals because this can be the, the right opportunity to get in touch with what you may want to um be the most sure in the next uh, in the next years going to graduate here in july that is just finished with his master thesis with a collaboration uh, a professional collaboration with leonardo actually in uh, natural language generation so but obviously there are many many different sectors uh, and areas of cybersecurity and engineering that can be exploited and seek so if any of you have any question, I, I can tell you by experience, uh, you should totally come here and ask. They don't bite. They are actually quite polite. And so no worries. Thank you. Thank you so much to everyone. Yeah, thanks, Saverio, for taking the lead as a representative. I mean, a great uh, also a stimulus to, for all the students. Uh, indeed, if there are other questions, we are happy to, to take and answer. As Saverio said, we and they, the speakers, don't bite. And we can actually help. I mean, uh, also as academicians, I'm, I'm also happy to underline that there are, of course, 
a lot of opportunities also in the academic world. That means, I mean, continuing maybe with a PhD, but not only for the sake or for, uh, for the only option of being uh, in the academia for the rest of your life. I mean, the companies can confirm there is a strong collaboration during the PhD and the research education and afterwards, a lot of people, many of them actually, they actually go, let's say back or to the industry world, not necessarily stay in academia. And I mean, with the companies here, we had collaboration and, and friends, colleagues involved in, uh, in the research world uh, before. So uh, if there are other questions, I'm happy to take and uh, leave again the floor to the, our panelists. Yes, please come. Uh, yeah, mine was just like um, a clarification. Um, so because you told that um, like your interest, like perhaps in uh, um, taking like uh, um, newly graduate students uh, or perhaps someone who take who does like um, a PhD. But my, mine was just a confirmation if you're like you're also interested in uh, um, taking uh, like uh, students that uh, want to do the thesis like with, uh, with you, yourself in. Uh... Okay. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Yeah, I think I mean they, I mean they, our speakers were nodding. Uh, I'm not sure whether for the uh, national agency, if there is, a, uh, I mean, a protocol to to make this happen, we didn't do it yet. Uh, no, I mean we are still, let's say, a startup institution. So there is a number of regulations uh, we still need uh, uh, to produce, and uh, the one uh, for stages. Uh, uh, is still lacking so we would be glad to have uh, this uh, but for the time being uh, i mean for the time being the only thing thing we can do is some collaboration uh, but uh, let's say a loose collaboration i mean mm -hmm. we 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 are not able to host uh, uh, trainees on on our facilities on our premises Thank you, thank you, Paolo. Uh, okay, so other questions? If not, let's thanks again all our speakers. It was, it was indeed a very, very interesting, uh, I mean, presentations and also discussion on several aspects. Uh, so thanks again, uh, Professor Paola Zeni from National Agency Cybersecurity, Massimo Tedeschi from Leonardo uh, SPA and uh, Enrico Fazio from Cyphergate SPA as well. Okay, so thanks for our uh, panel discussion. I will uh, now announce the second part of this event today, which is mostly based on the uh, presentation from a professor's point of view of the structure of our degree. So I think we'll start, uh, Eleonora, are you ready with the code? Okay, so with one of our uh, professor, uh, with a small, uh, say, break in questions, just to ask something to the students and to the participant online. Uh, and then we will uh, move to the actual presentation of the structure of the degree, what are the courses, the opportunities, collaboration with industry, Erasmus, and so on. Leonora? Mauro, I would, Mauro, I would like to... Yeah, please. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just goodbye. to say goodbye, because I'm, I don't know how long I... I'm staying because uh, they are calling me for a meeting. So let me say, let me thank you for the very interesting discussion and say goodbye. I will try to stay as long as possible, but at some point I will have to log off. Thank we you understand. very much. Thanks a lot. Thanks for being with us. Hope uh, you can make also in presence. Uh, looking forward to have you here in Padova. Hopefully, sure. Thank you. Thank you. Um.
un secondo. One second. Okay. Okay, so good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Eleonora Lusiuk. I'm a professor, system professor um, affiliated with the uh, Department of Mathematics. Today, my role will be to make the event a little bit smoother with this uh, very brief questionnaire. Uh, so please join the game by either scanning the QR code with your mobile phone, or if you can enter this pin, we can start. So I will wait a few seconds in order to see a bunch of participants and then we can start. Don't try to hack with the nickname, with a remote shell or doing something else, please. Okay, I think we can start. Oh, we even reached the maximum number of participants, okay. So uh, the game will be as follows. For every question, you will have some options on your phone and you have to Tap the one that you uh, prefer. Okay, that's not, uh, okay, let me, can we move this one somewhere else? Okay, so the first question is, uh, we basically just uh, came out from this uh, uh, COVID-19 pandemic. So we know uh, that infectious disease could be an issue. And the probability that we have an infectious disease is around 30.8%. So the question is, what is the probability associated to cyber attacks, according to you? You have a shape on your phone, and you should uh, choose the one that you think it is the most reasonable one. So 20.4%, uh, 25.1%, uh, 37.8%, or 40.1%. Oh, okay, sorry. Uh, not sure. Okay. 
Oh my God, sorry. Um, I was too fast. My bad, let's start again, sorry. Okay, so the question, of course, is the same as before. The answer as well. Okay, this will be a little bit annoying. Uh, Okay, so I don't want to tap uh, the next point anyway. So the correct answer is 37.8%, which is quite high, uh, even higher than the pandemic disease. Let's move to the next question. Try not to, okay, this is the intermediate uh, classification of the participants. Let's move on. What is the number of available jobs in cybersecurity worldwide in 2023? So this of course is an estimated uh, uh, number, but let's try to guess. You might, al you might also have some uh, possible answers according to what the uh, companies and our speakers today have uh, shared with us. So 4 million, okay. Uh, the majority of you provided the right uh, answer. Uh, of course, since you are attending this event, no one uh, chose the first option, which was no jobs available. Otherwise, it would be useless to be here. So happy to see that you are encouraged and uh, stimulated by this event and by this degree. Third question, what was the percentage of women working in cybersecurity in 2022? This is a hard one. We have a gender issue in this uh, field for sure, but we can always improve. You can see at least one, uh, which is in front of you, but let's see what is your guess. Okay. Okay, the majority said 13.5, uh, but uh, even seven of you, among you, told us that uh, uh, the estimated amount was uh, 2%. It is really, really, uh, a really, really small percentage. We were quite, uh, there was quite a higher number, which was around 24, and only a single person pro provided the correct answer. So, of course, the let's say the, the final destination or the aim would be to have maybe 50%. This is our uh, aim, but let's try. So, uh, right now, it is a little bit hard. So, fourth question. In 2020, the number of employees in Italian cybersecurity companies were, was more than 5,000. What about 2023? So we can somehow measure how fast is growing the request for this kind of uh, people with this kind of uh, background. Okay. So the correct answer was uh, even more than 20,000. 20, and this is a very significant number. So please enroll into this uh, uh, master degree and try to uh, build your background so that you can uh, fill this gap in the, you know, in the companies and in the working world. Moving on, I don't want to spoil that much the classification. In Italy, what is the occupation rate one year after the graduation in a master degree in cybersecurity? All the options are quite high, uh, but you know we can reach the perfect percentage. Okay, only four of you thought that after one year you managed to find a, jo a job. And the answer is that actually you will be able to find it immediately. So once again, you are encouraged to enroll in this master degree. Uh, as I said, even the other percentages were quite high, but specifically for this field, the request for people that have this kind of background is uh, pretty high. So uh, it's just a matter to uh, learn this field, you know. Okay, 
Question number six. In Italy, how much do you expect to earn three years after graduation? More than Mr. Robot is actually uncountable, so we couldn't manage to provide an exact number. Okay, four people want to earn more than Mr. Robot. Uh, I, I mean, I do not have any objection. It's just a matter of having some uh, objectives. So if your objective is to earn more than Mr. Robot is fine. Uh, but uh, technically speaking, after three years, uh, again, this is a rough estimate, you might earn uh, around uh, 1,844 users per month. So this is also uh, a quite interesting amount of money. Uh, as an academic, I would say that is a this is a pretty interesting amount of money. But um, yeah, so again, uh, this field is uh, highly, people in this field are highly required and also highly recognized from an uh, you know, economical point of view. Let's move on with the seventh question. How do you learn cybersecurity at UniPD? So we have four options. You can't learn cybersecurity. Uh, this is, might be also our fault. Uh, only through theoretical books, also through capture the flag competition, only through traditional lectures. Spoiler, you have to know what is a, a capture the flag competition. I see some people here attended some events, so I guess, okay. You can't learn cybersecurity. Thank you for, <laughs> I hope you will change your mind at the end of your uh, degree, uh, keep in touch. Uh, okay, so also through capture the flag competition, what does it mean for those that do not know uh, what is this kind of competition? This is basically one of the most uh, interesting and also exciting events that you can have because you can have the opportunity to learn, uh, really learning by doing, which means uh, that you have a set of uh, what are called challenges or exercises through which you learn the uh, cybersecurity practices. So you have to hack a website or you have a binary file and you have to understand what is the right uh, password to bypass it, or you have to, uh, to crack a system. So uh, in each competition, you have some uh, exercises and by managing to find what is called the flag, which is in this case, just a string hidden somewhere in the, in the system, uh, you basically learn uh, the fundamentals of cybersecurity. So I would say that this is really exciting. And uh, I also see that usually students like this kind of approach. So we are happy to, to have this kind of structure also in uh, some of our courses. Question number eight, what is the name of the first Italian training program in cybersecurity for young students? You might have heard about it since we organized it uh, over the past six years right now. But let's see if someone still hasn't heard. Okay, uh, so the correct answer was uh, cyberchallenge.it. Um, for those of you that uh, haven't heard about it, uh, this is basically a national competition organized by CINI, which is a consortium of universities in Italy. Uh, the event is uh, aimed to select a bunch of people, 20 students through an admission test and to give them the fundamentals of cybersecurity again uh, through this uh, capture the flag competition uh, structure. The course, so after the selection, we have a course that lasts for three months from March to May. Uh, it is quite intensive, but also very uh, stimulating and interesting. So the people, the students that manage to be selected usually are pretty happy. Uh, at, the end of, at the end of the course. And we have two uh, different um, competitions, one that is local and then a national one. In the local, we have to select the six best students. And then we have to compete uh, uh, with other universities uh, in Turin every year for this national competition. Um, I would say the, uh, that there is a limitation on the age. So you can subscribe uh, if you uh, are younger than 23 years old. Uh, if that is the case, I strongly recommend you to, um, to enroll and to try the admission test next year because the experience is pretty unique and very formative. So uh, 
keep an eye on your email because maybe maybe you will receive an email by me around November uh, when the uh, registrations will open. Okay, I guess last question. Is the cyberchallenge.it event organized at UNIPD? I spoiled it, but there is also uh, an additional information that you might not know. Okay, I think we spread the word quite uh, significantly. So uh, as I said, uh, right now we, uh, we have been involved in this competition for uh, the past six years. So there will be six uh, uh, different editions and we managed to, won the to win the first one. Uh, of course, there is always place for, uh, you know, for improving ourselves. So if you want to uh, be part of this team and also represent your university, uh, once again, I strongly recommend you to subscribe to this event and to uh, do your best to, to, to be selected in the, official, uh, in the official team. So the take-home message is that uh, at UNIPD, uh, you have from one side the official master degree with the courses, but on the other side, we also have an interesting event, which is this cyber challenge. So you can learn cybersecurity from different points of view. I don't know who is Sav, but uh, congratulations. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> right, and there was a spoiler. Uh, okay, so congratulations. We don't have any, I think, uh, price. any price. Yes. Let's see. Exactly. Uh, yeah, so thank you for participating. And I will now leave the floor to the uh, professors that will introduce the, the master degree program. Thank you, Eleonora. Uh, congratulations to the winner and the participant. Thanks uh, for taking part. So I'm happy now to call here uh, the, all the professors that I mean, few of them that will uh, present. I mean, not all of them, few are here in the room. Uh, let me also take this chance actually to, to thank, I mean, of course, my institution, uh, University of Padre, they also trusted us to to start this endeavor a few years, I mean, now four years ago, we were one of the first university to uh, start a, a master's degree specifically in cybersecurity. So, I mean, as you might know, you can suspect in Italy, everything is, uh, as Professor Azzeni was saying, I mean, particularly from the public administration institutions, it's uh, strongly regulated. So uh, having a master's degree in cybersecurity means uh, setting up a degree that respects a lot of constraints given by the ministry and there was a class cybersecurity specifically defined also thanks to the effort of many colleagues uh, uh, country-wise that kind of pushed the ministry to, to set up this degree, which I mean, long time ago, we believed it was needed. And I think we have a lot of confirmation today. So we had uh, uh, our university trusting us to setting up this, uh, this degree, as you understood, it's a multi uh, department involvement in the degree and also i want to thank all the people uh, that are here or are behind the curtains that are helping uh, to to set up and to manage the degree so we have uh, deputy uh, heads uh, david bresolin uh, from the department of mathematics like please take a seat uh, nicola laurenti and with nicola also we are actually designing uh, please take a seat <laughs> also designing a new uh, international master degree in uh, cyber security and cyber intelligence all International. We are also waiting another colleague, uh, which is also deputy head from the engineering department, uh, Nicola Ferro. He should be able to join us uh, shortly. There are other colleagues here in the room and some online. So I want to thank all of you because I mean we need I mean collaboration and contribution from our university, all the administrative support, and all the colleagues to make this uh, happen and to have a strong program as I hope and believe we have. So thanks. Uh, you want to okay. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Mauro. Uh, so, after seeing the view on cybersecurity from the companies and after uh, learning some surprising things about uh, cybersecurity, it's now time to see um, how can you uh, learn cybersecurity and how we teach cybersecurity here in Padova. That's basically uh, the objective of, uh, uh, of this presentation. Uh, what we will see now, well, 
first thing we see, is it everything okay? Do I have to share the screen? Okay. Um, uh, anyway, so we will first see what is a, a master degree in cybersecurity according to the ministry. Okay. Zoom. Okay, now we should be fine. Okay, so um, first we'll see what is the general structure of a uh, master degree in cybersecurity. Then we'll see how the master degree uh, in cybersecurity here in Padova is different from the other ones that you can find in Italy. Um, and then we will move uh, on the details on the organization on the program and uh, uh, the different opportunities that you will have if you choose to uh, join us. Uh, at the Master in Cybersecurity. So uh, the Master in Cybersecurity is regulated by the Ministry of Education. So it should follow some uh, uh, rules uh, that are dictated by the ministry. And surprisingly enough, if you look at the rules, uh, you discover that uh, by the ministry, a uh, Master in Cybersecurity is uh, in reality uh, an interdisciplinary master. So it includes, of course, uh, um, a part uh, in, uh, that is in about uh, mathematics and computer science that covers more than one third of the, of the program. That is the blue part in this uh, um, uh, pie graph here. Uh, it includes also a part on uh, technology, engineering, information system, and communication that is another more than one third of the program. But there is a part, 25% uh, that is uh, dedicated to uh, topics in law, psychology and business because, of course, the ministry shared the view of, Pro of Professor Azzeni that uh, told us that, uh, uh, okay, we need more computer scientists at the ministry, but we also need more lawyers and more business businessmen that know about security. And so any cybersecurity professional should be able to talk and to, to collaborate with people from uh, law and, uh, um, and business. Uh, and also um, yeah, obtaining a master degree in cybersecurity allow you also to enter in the re register of professional engineers in Italy. So this is also another advantage that you can have uh, and it can be very important from some kind of jobs. Uh, however, how is uh, cybersecurity taught in Italy right now? Well, if you look around, you will see that in most universities, cybersecurity is not a proper degree, but it's more, more likely a curriculum inside another master degree. So it's usually a curriculum inside a computer science or a computer engineering or a telecommunication engineering degree. And this means that in most of Italy, um, cybersecurity is, is taught only from the point of view of the computer science and the engineering perspective. Very little is dedicated to uh, the other aspects of cybersecurity. There are a few, let's say, native cybersecurity degrees uh, that are a proper degree. And so that includes uh, co complement the scientific and technological area with uh, law and business skills. But those degrees are usually managed and rooted in a single department, mainly computer science. So even if they include parts that are not strictly computer science engineering, they are heavily focused once again in computer science and engineering. Uh, computer uh, cybersecurity at uh, Padova is unique, meaning because it is a joint effort of different departments. Uh, the two main departments are the Department of Mathematics that covers, of course, the scientific area and the computer science area, and uh, uh, the Department of Information Engineering that, uh, of course, covers also the computer science part, but also the uh, computer engineering and telecommunication part. But we have a strong collaboration also from the Department of Psychology on Law and Economics. And so uh, this means that uh, uh, as a, a master degree, we are able to uh, build on the scientific excellence of all the departments involved. And we are able to uh, provide uh, courses and uh, teaching uh, in uh, several important research fields. So in, uh, of course, the main areas of cybersecurity, but also machine learning, 
big data analytics, uh, telecommunication, quantum cryptography and communication, but also in uh, areas that are not strictly scientific and technological. So we have also courses on cognitive and computational neuroscience in law, human computer interaction. So uh, because we want uh, a graduate in cybersecurity to be able to speak and to collaborate to people that are not strictly um, cybersecurity professionals. Uh, and also as a master degree, and thanks to the uh, collaboration with the, the other departments, we are able to, uh, we have many strong industrial connections. Some of them we have seen uh, today, but uh, there are many others. We have collaboration uh, with companies in security, of course, but also in banking, logistics and transportation, insurance, consultancy, web development, automotive, electronics, telecommunication, biomedicals, and many others that I probably forgot that are not included in this list. So these allow um, the students to do thesis, internships, and many kinds of collaborations during uh, their study uh, course. Uh, and how uh, do we have implemented all the scientific excellence that we have from the departments and the collaboration in the industry? Well. Uh, we have implemented it by building up a study plan of a two-year master degree that is taught fully in English. So it's a 120 credits degree uh, in two years, uh, of which 60 degrees are of uh, mandatory courses that every student should follow. That uh, includes base courses on security, base courses on supporting methodologies that are important for, cyber, for modern cybersecurity, and also some courses on advanced topics that are, uh, let's say, on the front line of the cybersecurity research. Uh, then there are 24 credits of elective courses, of which 12 are from, should be chosen from a list of given courses, and 12 should be chosen freely among uh, basically every other course that is available here in the University of Padova. So not only the courses taught at the cybersecurity, but also from other master degrees. Uh, then there are three credits of English, uh, three credits of extra activities like seminars, projects, internship in companies. And then uh, uh, there are 30, 30 credits, so one semester dedicated to the thesis that uh, can be both uh, be either a research thesis uh, done, uh, done at the university, but also, uh, let's say, a thesis done at a company with an internship. Um, the courses are divided into four areas. We have courses on foundational security aspects. We have courses on foundational methodologies. We have courses on advanced and uh, specialized topics. And we also we have cro cross-cutting courses that covers all the three areas. Among the mandatory courses, uh, there are two foundational courses, one in cybersecurity and cryptography, and one in information security that gives uh, every uh, graduate in cybersecurity the basic uh, knowledge about the basic topics on cryptography and cybersecurity. Uh, then uh, among the courses the, on fundamental methodologies, we have a course on machine learning and deep learning, because of course, machine learning is uh, every day more important in security nowadays. But we also have a course in cognition and computation because we uh, think that it's important for a cybersecurity professional to also new the psychology and neuroscience aspects of computing. We have a course on stochastic process because it's important to have the mathematical language that is necessary to describe and model correctly cybersecurity problems, cybersecurity systems. Um, and then uh, for the advanced and specialized courses, we have uh, courses on digital forensics and biometrics that covers the connection between cybersecurity and law. So what does it mean to uh, investigate uh, cybercrime, what are the te technology that we have, what are the legal aspects that we have to follow. And then, of course, a course in advanced topics in computer network security, where you will learn uh, uh, what is the uh, most hot and relevant topics in uh, uh, computer network security. These are the 60 credits of mandatory courses that you have to follow. Uh, and then, sorry, <laughs> last six credits. Uh, should be chosen between uh, one of the three courses listed in the slide. So either the course on human-computer interaction or law and data or service management. 
So those are courses that are not strictly related to um, science and technology, but that covers uh, psychology aspects uh, with the human computer interaction, low weight data, of course, uh, and service management. So what are the business rules that you have to follow if you want to be a professional in, uh, um, in cybersecurity? And then uh, for the elective courses, you can choose uh, uh, two courses among this list that every year is uh, getting longer and longer. So we have uh, more topics in uh, cybersecurity, so ethical hacking, security and risk management, mobile security, quantum cryptography, quantum information, software verification, cyber physical systems and IoT security, privacy preserving information access. But we also have other courses that are more on the um, foundational methodologies that you can use uh, in your cybersecurity job. So game theory, databases, web application, formal methods, combinatorial optimization, wireless networks, vision and cognitive systems, internet of things, big data, et cetera. And then of course, uh, uh, you have 12 credits that you can choose, as I told you before, basically among all the master degrees that we have here in Padova. So you can basically use your fantasy to extend your program and tailor it to uh, whatever you like and whatever you study more. Uh, the list of uh, elective courses grows every year because uh, uh, we are trying to improve the program every year. So I'm very proud to announce that for next year, so from 2023, 2024, there will be two more courses that you can choose in your program. One course is a course on adversarial machine learning because machine learning is every day more important also in security. So it's very important to uh, being able to identify the security threats on machine learning system and how to defend from them. So we have a course that is uh, dedicated to these topics, both from the theoretical point of view and also from the practical point of view, because the course includes also case studies on attack and defense strategies, uh, on spam detection filters, uh, some very well-known data leak on America Online and Netflix and some other case studies. And also uh, there will be another uh, course that is called Security of Advanced Networking Service. That is a course that doesn't have a specific topic, but is dedicated uh, to, be, to contain a series of lectures from uh, um, international experts that illustrates advanced topics in cybersecurity. So it's basically a course that every year we lost uh, different uh, uh, lecturers uh, and different topics. And uh, from next year, uh, it will last uh, two um, uh, international lecturers. Uh, one is uh, Jen Sudik from the University of California in Irvine. And, one, and another one is Christina Rintanotaru from North Northwestern University. So that next year we'll be visiting here at the University of Padova. And so we'll have the opportunity to meet uh, also um, professors and uh, experts from other university and other countries. So uh, to, this is important to give our students uh, also a visibility on the international market and international uh, research on cybersecurity. Um, so basically, uh, we think that uh, um, the structure of the course uh, uh, is solid and that we have been able to uh, design a, a solid a study program that uh, blends together computer science, information and computer, uh, communication technology and engineering, but also psychology, economics and law to offer uh, all the students that will uh, join our program, a, solid, a strong background on security, a solid knowledge on the underlying technology and methodologies, but also a 360 degrees understanding of the cross-disciplinary implication of security aspects. So in the hope that when you will finish, you will be able to uh, go on the job market and be not only a strong cybersecurity expert, but also people that can collaborate and talk to people from the law, from the economics, from the business uh, departments and the business areas that are interested in doing security uh, and hoping that you can teach them a little bit, a little bit of security that we need 
to be, uh, I mean, uh, uh, to know what cybersecurity is and what are the problems, what they, they have to do to, uh, to make a computer system more secure. Uh, finally, a little bit of logistics. So how to uh, enroll. So basically the enroll procedure is different if either you have uh, you given your degree in Italy or uh, outside Italy. Uh, from outside Italy, the procedure is through the uh, apply system that is managed by University of Padova. But I think that basically uh, this uh, uh, window expired on June 2nd. So now basically the enrollment window is open for the people with an, uh, an Italian bachelor's degree. The what is called a visit a mission is already out and the system will open, I think, somewhere in July. So you can start apply from uh, uh, July onwards. Uh, if you have a bachelor's degree in Italy, you need uh, a, a minimum of credits in uh, uh, computer science or computer engineering or telecommunications. So 12, 24 credits in your bachelor's degree, plus 12 credits, 18 credits are in mathematics. If you follow these rules and you have uh, a minimum uh, degree classification of uh, 85 on 110, then you basically follow the minimum requirements to enter. Um, if you do not uh, meet the requirements, you can also apply. And in that case, uh, uh, the admission committee will evaluate your curriculum and see if you still have a strong curriculum in terms of knowledge on computer science, information engineering, and mathematics to enter. Also, if you do not meet the minimal requirements. So you can apply also in this case. Um, when uh, you are uh, in the program, you can also have opportunities to, uh, of course, do a period abroad because uh, University of Padova is part of the Erasmus Plus program, of course. So you can do one or two semesters abroad during your uh, period, your study period. You can do your thesis abroad. You can do in internships abroad using the Erasmus program to find the partners. But also we have two more other programs. One is the same program for mobility in Switzerland. And the another one is the Ulisse project for mobility on non-European countries. So United States, uh, South America, uh, Middle, and, uh, Middle East, Far East, everything, everywhere else in the world is also included in the Ulisse project. Um, also from the, let's say, point of view of the fees, I think that the fees uh, is, uh, the, the maximum fees is around uh, 2,600 euros, but most of the students pay, pay much less than, the, than, than that, because there are many ways to reduce or either uh, remove completely the fee. Um, but uh, if, you have a, if you are a very good student or from, uh, to support the students, uh, um, that are not, uh, uh, let's say, very strong from the economic point of view. So please uh, look uh, in the website of the University of Padova to, to find out how you can reduce your fee. And also, uh, if you need anything else related to uh, the application or all the administrative aspects, uh, feel free to contact the administrative staff of the Department of Mathematics at the May cybersecurity at math.unipd.it. And we also have a website, so cybersecurity.math.unipd.it. So please look in this website to have the contacts and all the information that you need. And uh, that's basically everything from my point. So I think that it's time for, so for some questions and answers. Yeah, thanks a lot, Davide. So indeed, now we have time and we're happy to answer your question that you might have uh, here or online. Uh, yeah, you, you know the answer? Well, yes, it will be taught by the Professor Stefano Tomazin at our Department of Information Engineering. So. Yes, it's already 
I don't know if the appointment is official yet, but it's uh, from a practical point of view, it is. Which one? Oh, that is, that is the one probably that he mentioned to host the two professors. Yeah. Just a kind of generic name to, to keep both of their uh, kind of expertise. Other questions? Don't be shy. Typically, this is the part of the presentation so, that gets the most questions from the students. So unless you are we've been very, very super clear, but I, there's, there's always something that we don't think of and you come up with a question. So please do so. We still don't bite. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Keep being uh, polite and kind if we can. The only question, which is probably, I mean, we can predict uh, from foreign students, it's accommodation we know still uh, quite a challenge, but uh, there's nothing much we can do as a board, but uh, um, we know that the university per se is, is actually putting a lot of effort to, to work on it. And there are some action, I, I hope uh, FX will be very practical in the next academic year as well. Yeah. You might want to come here, maybe the also for the recording online for foreign students, which are probably not here yet. Yeah. Uh, hi, I'm Zahid. I was trying to say that as a foreign student, I find it a bit challenging to to network uh, specifically in the field uh, and uh, find the opportunities. I'm sure that there are a lot of it. But where to start and, and how to proceed is, uh, I'm sure there will be some specific advices and ways to, to share. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you uh, for the question. I mean, as you heard also from the panelists we had today, of course, I mean, if working for, uh, say, national government agency, there might be restriction, but I think this would be probably in every country you go. But uh, companies basically are more than welcome as we heard. I mean, the ones that we uh, that, that were here this morning, we also had another event yesterday with several companies. Uh, and again, we are in touch with several companies. Uh, they usually don't have uh, any restriction on, on the nationality. So you're welcome to, uh, I mean, to discuss with the professors and participate in the events like this one and others we have and get in touch with companies. Uh, I think, as you heard, I mean, there are a lot of opportunities and they are eager to, to get uh, people. Uh, I mean, one of the suggestions was actually work, uh, study hard. I can only say on that suggestion. That's very good. I mean, that, that, it, that is very likely you will get position uh, kind of anyway, but it would be great, uh, I mean, for us, of course, to, to graduate uh, strongly skilled people. And uh, in the world, we need strongly skilled people. So try to indeed study hard but I don't think you will miss opportunities. Uh, so yeah, I mean, yeah. you wanna if, add something? Yeah, if, if I may add, um, there, have, there are very, uh, um, a lot of opportunities. Um, events, uh, where, like career events uh, uh, that organized by the University Career Service and uh, um, where companies uh, um, present the opportunities or you can, um, or uh, events like or program wide events where several uh, companies, and this is not just a single company, but several companies are invited to um, talk to candidates for internship candidates and so on. Um, also, if I may have a suggestion, is uh, uh, keep attending, keep uh, uh, leave the university leave the campus, live, not leave, okay? <laughs> uh, leave your, your class, talk, keep in touch uh, with your, and exchange your experiences with your classmates, with the ones that are one year ahead of you, two years ahead of you, uh, with your professors. Uh, all of these are important sources for you to get uh, uh, opportunities, uh, opportunities for 
internship, opportunities for thesis work, uh, opportunities for uh, research, opportunities also for uh, being hired for for um, uh, submitting your your candidacy uh, um, or your applications for uh, for hiring. Um, yes. Uh, don't stay at home. Some of these, most of, uh, typically these events are, of course, advertised on our uh, web channels, uh, uh, university web channels, but uh, if you're at the department or at the university when they happen, you can sometimes even just bump into them. And uh, so my suggestion is uh, keep keep in touch with with. Uh, with your classmates, your professors, uh, and and uh, attend the the attend the university environment um, often, and then will and opportunities will come to you. Yeah, fully agree on this. I mean, li leaving the university is a suggestion. I learned when I was a kid. I mean, your age probably <laughs> when I was doing the uh, doing the master degree myself. Uh, I I I uh, find it very valuable suggestion because it's. Uh, it's a very formative to, I mean, talk your peer and talk also to the professor that are around. I mean, we very usually don't bite. We might be busy sometimes, but <laughs> we don't bite definitely. Uh, we are very happy to share our, I mean, contacts and opportunities with companies. And uh, also, I mean, there are students representative. You have one here. Uh, another is abroad uh, uh, for for uh, uh, experience abroad, uh, and you can use them or leverage them or exploit or 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 get make use of <laughs> make use of them somehow uh yeah to 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 get into the all activities that we have we 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 really much i mean uh, push a lot of effort also to organize events like today i mean it's definitely not easy nothing comes for free also inviting people organizing everything takes effort we will be very happy if you exploit all these uh, opportunities at the best thanks Other questions? Yeah, if you come here, well, if you want to ask a question, I think it's better. But here for the recording, we can probably hear you anyway, but uh, thanks. Hi, I am uh, Alessio from the uh, first year of informatic engineering. And I will ask, uh, I would like to ask- Bachelor. Uh, sorry? In bachelor degree? Um, and, uh, yes. Okay. And uh, I would like to ask uh, uh, what the percentage of students uh, uh, ending the course in time is uh, about this uh, course. In, in our master degree. Yes. Oh, we don't have many statistics, as you can ma imagine, because uh, because we graduated. Uh, I mean, the first year, the first batch of students, uh, this June. Year. Yeah, June uh, last year, right? So yeah, we don't have many statistics. Um, so the first year we there were not many, but uh, maybe 30, 40 percent between let's say September, January of the end of that academic session. So I, I feel uh, I mean we designed the program. I mean the number of credits is the one expected for a master degree. Uh, of course, in us, in all uh, degrees and all professors, even though we don't bite, sometimes we can make students' life hard. But uh, I mean, in terms of asking you to study, uh, but I, I mean, there are no big uh, issues to, I mean, if a student properly dedicate the full-time work to study to end within two years, then of course, it depends on the student. If somebody wants to take a bit more easy, want to do some other experience in the meanwhile, it might take more, but of course, also, my suggestion is to focus at the best and try to uh, complete. Thank you. Um, I, yeah. I also would like to add a comment here. Um, a significant fraction of our students uh, decided, for instance, to take summer internships that were uh, well well paid <laughs> and was clearly uh, and, uh, and therefore uh, taking a summer internship at the end of your first year typically prevents you to do uh, do many exams in your uh, uh, the fall session, like the September session. Uh, so this is, um, of course, it's a trade-off. It will uh, slightly delay your graduation. 
Um, and it was something that we discussed with, with uh, many of the, uh, of the students. And of course, we don't want to, to impose neither. We don't, it's, it's reasonable not to impose either view, okay? Um, so some of the students made this choice willingly, say, okay, I'm okay with graduating later because I believe that this internship is very uh, uh, rewarding for me, both from the academic and professional point of view. So this is also a point to, to consider which, with respect to other may program which don't have these opportunities. Any other question? Don't be shy. Uh, I see we have online also Laura Provasi from the admin uh, team. And so if you have an uh, admin question, which we might not be able to answer or, or we, <laughs> we might ask her some ask for that help. So thanks for yes. being available. Hi, everyone. Thank you. Thank you for being with us. If you need any answer question you have, I'm here. Unfortunately, we cannot take questions from YouTube, from YouTube streaming, uh, but uh, okay, this is kind of okay, but cannot take question there, I think. Okay, so there are uh, no questions from Zoom here. Okay, you sure you there is anything else? No, or nothing else you want to ask? All clear, Saverio? <laughs> okay. Oh, maybe okay. actually a good point. You know what? You come here, you share your experience. I mean, in brief, but if you like, I mean, uh, it would be nice to hear the good thing. You can also uh, say the bad thing. We 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 not listen. I'm joking. We okay. will actually listen. And yeah. Thank things. you. Uh, I'll just try to uh, recall the the two questions I already heard from the professors. I for Zahid, I completely I completely agree with what they said of leaving the environment and trying to take the best of your time, in my opinion, to decide which is the fields and the uh, topics that you are the most interested into. This can also come at the expense of maybe taking a bit more time. And this is to answer also the second question as well. As what we could see in just a year, uh, the master degree is aligned with uh, all the master's degree in um, uh, computer engineering, computer science that you can find in Italy. So it's not way harder, you know, it's not way easier, it's balanced. And a lot of students eventually can take all their exams with their time, also experiencing uh, what differs for other courses uh, a lot of additional experience, like uh, the stages, uh, the internships, uh, uh, the possibility of doing the thesis abroad, uh, stuff like that. So I wouldn't be too concerned about it. And as a matter of fact, in my opinion, and this is a shared opinion with a lot of people, there are different courses in which uh, we felt uh, probably um, a harder time during the bachelor degree that the master's degree itself, because during the master's degree, you may have a bit more of a choice you study things you are more interested into uh, that with respect of the foundation for example i come from a bachelor degree in mathematics i had way more fun during my master degree in cybersecurity than during my bachelor degree in mathematics so i if i had to retake one of the two i will obviously go for the master degree again um, so I want to be too preoccupied about the difficulty itself. And for the, um, for the experience and the networking, additionally to what we already, we already said, once you find out uh, which is uh, the kinds of areas you're most interested in, uh, go to the professors, uh, talk actually to the professors, ask them if they are already collaborating with companies, um, or if they have some project uh, open on some kind of, um, um, maybe it's their research, but can be a, a job opportunity for that, for you. For example, I don't know, maybe you're interested in uh, um, malware or Android security, then you may want to go to Professor Lozuk and ask her if she is collaborating with some companies or something. If you may like the, the work with the space, maybe for Leonardo something, you would like some protocols or interaction from satellites, you may want to go to Professor Laurenti and ask him if he's already collaborating with some companies. And a lot of times, uh, internships and thesis starts uh, this way, start this way. Like, they may say, oh yeah, 
I know some, I know a guy in a company, I know a salesperson or another, and they can ask them and, um, and something can be arranged. But the main point is that you must be present in order to understand what the professors are doing. And uh, in uh, the, the second, uh, in the second moment, uh, you should, you uh, need to decide, okay, I take some exam. So when I go to the professor, I can tell you, this is what I can do. This is what I already know. Can we please arrange something? And something can be arranged. But the point is you should speak up. Uh, generally speaking, I really like this master degree, obviously. Otherwise, I wouldn't have uh, volunteered myself to be um, a student representative. Um, I worked uh, both with professors and students proactively and uh, had a lot of like um, um, challenging but rewarding um, experiences. So I don't really have... Uh, Anything that uh, uh, I didn't like about the master degree, maybe one thing that I could have um, uh, I could have done, uh, considering my last year, is uh, that uh, coming to the second year of your master degree, if you already decided which is the path you're going to follow, it's probable that um, you are uh, you have already um, a clear vision of what you were, you will like to do. So, for example, what I considered in the second year is that. I didn't focus too much on learning new things because I already knew what uh, the university could have taught me in with relation to what uh, I liked. Because when you come to the second year of the master's degree, uh, if you want to specialize, for example, in adversarial machine learning, you and and the, the courses that the university can provide at that level. Either you go up to a PhD level or you are down. So in those cases, in the case you feel may stale or in a too rigid environment because you don't find too many opportunities take the opportunity with the professors to analyze uh, internships and the erasmus projects uh, the in the um, uh, mobility project because if i have to look back at my I, this year i said okay i did some good things here staying here in padua but maybe i would have liked to i don't know go experience something to work in a company or uh, to to do a thesis in a company but obviously that depends on what you would like to do so at the end of the day, yeah, these are my considerations. So if there is any specific question on some courses and stuff, I basically by this point know more or less all the problems <laughs> because I I I I, infor I try to gather information for the students. So even if I didn't take some courses, I may know something about them. So please uh, let me know if you want to know anything specific. Obviously, we have also Laura here, Laura Provasi, that can help us with the specific uh, technical administrative um, uh, issues. Uh, and we we can discuss it. But for the rest, yeah, my experience was positive. Uh, I had I had fun. Also, uh, were increase. I were really interested in what I studied, and I find I found actually some specific um, um, orientation from uh, my next journey within the university or uh, the, the the profession, uh, the, the job environment. So yeah, I'm satisfied, and I really recommend it as. Many of you already know because I told with a lot of you already, but I keep recommending this master degree also because remember that all the good things we already spoke about uh, were able to happen in just a couple of years because as they told you uh, on June on on July we will have the second batch of official graduates from this master degree. I hope to be one of the two, but let, we will see either, either down in September. But the point is that. We were able to do a lot of things in so little time with all the problem of uh, all the rigidity of the Italian bureaucracy. So, give uh, also um, a, a shot at this program and recommend it to people you think they may be interested in too, because this is moving extremely fast, as they already proved with all the new courses and the experiences that we already had with companies and so on. And uh, this is just going to be increasingly improved in the next years. So, uh, I mean, I know you probably, hope for you, won't be here in 10 years unless you are professors. But um, still, uh, in a couple of years, a lot can change. So if you, this, if you, for example, at a, are in a bachelor degree right now, at the beginning of a bachelor degree, I think that in uh, four to five years, there is going to be really a lot going on here, considering all the efforts that a lot of people are actually putting, as you can see. So this is it. Thank you.
Thanks a lot. Thanks, uh, Saverio, of, uh, for sharing your view and also for I mean, your role as a representative. Indeed, uh, I can only confirm that we are working hard to, uh, I mean, to, to build things that we already built, but it's continuous growing. We also recently hired uh, several people. I mean, Eleonora has been mentioned, Alessandro, other people are also young, young professors at the engineering department to, to teach new courses, right? I mean, we can try to design new courses to catch what is actually needed from, let's say, the market, from the society. And you also mentioned we are facing uh, with the uh, Italian bureaucracy, which is, I mean, part of probably any country, but now we want to move to the next level because we are facing with the European or multi-country bureaucracy. <laughs> because we, as I, I anticipated before, we are now, we keep growing and buildings and we build on what we already have done. But now we have this opportunity to have uh, also in parallel and let's say a twin of this degree to have another degree, which will be completely international in the sense that there will be multiple partners involved from the Arcus Consortium and will be again, an international cybersecurity and cyber intelligence degree. And for this, I will leave the uh, floor and the word to uh, Nicola Laurenti, which is uh, leading this uh, effort to tell us something about this new degree. Yes, thank you. And, uh... So I apologize because this may not be too interesting for those students that are starting their master program next year, because this is a program that will start on the following year. That means 24, 25. Uh, however, since I've seen there are also younger students um, that may be interested in that. And um, it's, it's a joint um, master program, uh, international master program between four sorry, among four universities in the Arcus Consortium. That's Padova, that's University of Granada in Spain, that's Vilnius University in Lithuania, and University of Minho from Portugal. And uh, uh, the question is, well, first of all, uh, okay, the question is why uh, a joint program and then uh, why another cybersecurity program in Padova international, be, given that the current program is already international enough. I mean, it is taught, fully taught in English and we have a lot of international students. Well, the answer to that is, it's something that comes from, um, it's a call from the European institutions that uh, want, that would like, they are imagining for the uh, European uh, citizens of the future, a uh, networks of young professionals that across borders, across different countries can uh, work together um, to build a better future, uh, of course, for uh, thinking about Europe, but of course, clearly the program is open to students from outside Europe as well. And uh, for this reason, uh, we know that the Erasmus program has been, for my generation, the Erasmus program was, Paradise, okay, it was uh, an, a, a great experience to share for one semester or one year, um, studying with people from, uh, with people in a different country or with people from a different country. And it was, and it has shaped uh, uh, probably our generation view on, on, on the professional opportunities and on Europe. Um, after that, we've had several attempts to um, and very effective, actually, uh, program, uh, so called like double programs um, with different universities, uh, where one or a student could attend, let's say, one semester in a university and another semester in another one and get a degree, so a double degree uh, from each university, and that was valid in each country. But the joint program is the next step. Uh, a joint program is a joint degree, so your degree, so the degree in that case does not come from the University of Padova or from the University of Granada, it comes from the consortium. And uh, the level of interaction, the level of planning, the level of, uh, in, in the program is a lot more in, strongly interlaced between the partner universities. Um, so, 
why did we, as Padova, get involved into this pro this project? Be basically, because we already had the experience of this master program, which is working and it's working well. And so we have been called to share the, our experience with other universities. Granada already has a um, short one-year master program in cybersecurity. As for the other universities, um, they don't have a full program in cybersecurity. Um, the this program is would sit even better as a one curriculum inside the current master program. But unfortunately, for legal reasons, we cannot have a joint program that is part of another program. So we had to set up formally set up a different uh, a different master program, which is this international. But as you may understand, this program is not detached from the from the Padova all in Padova cybersecurity program. It actually shares some of the classes here. Uh, what will happen for the students in this international program is that they will spend one semester in each of the four institutions. They will start with their first semester in Padova, second semester in Vilnius, third semester in Granada, and the last semester in, in University of Minho. And each of the institutions will provide a different, uh, uh, let's say, a different approach. For instance, in Vilnius universities, they have a lot of uh, classes that are centered around laboratory work, um, lab experiences. In the University of Granada, they are providing their expertise into international cyber intelligence, uh, um, geopolitical, and, uh, and uh, 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 let's say, and cyber warfare aspects. Um, and in, in Minho, uh, there will be the, uh, the last semester, which will include internships and uh, the, perform the, the carrying out of an uh, defense, attack and defense exercise uh, uh, for the whole class. So it's good. It, I'm very excited. I'm very excited for the program. I'm very excited for this idea of having a cohort of, say, 30, around 30 to 40 students sharing, uh, staying together and traveling around Europe say, in these two years. Um, it, it's uh, it one of the first uh, um, joint master programs in the EU. And uh, as I said, uh, I'm really excited to see what comes out of this. But uh, we've, had, we've made every effort, I assure you, to have it started next year. We obtained the approval from the Italian government in time, which we would never believe. Okay. Unfortunately, the European accreditation is delayed a little bit. And so we couldn't make it for this year. And it would be, uh, it will start so in 24, 25. But spread the word to your younger colleagues. And uh, does, we have even more exciting opportunities for education in cybersecurity at Padova and around you. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, very good. So uh, if you have question again, I'll ask. But if there are no other questions, then uh, I'm also happy uh, now to conclude this event. Thanks uh, all the participants, our panelists. I mean, the one online that probably left also the the call by now, uh, the ones that are still in the room from the companies and all our colleagues that made this event possible and all the degree with all the activities we do with the teaching and uh, supervising the students and so on. And of course, all the students, because I mean, without this, not only this would not be possible, but would not make sense at all, right? So <laughs> thanks for the students for, I mean, uh, giving us uh, trust and, and being part of uh, the network and the community at the cybersecurity degree at the University of Padua. Thank you all.